Hi there, we're going to solve this problem from the 1989 Math Counts competition. And just for kicks, we'll solve the problem in three different ways. Here's the problem. We're given two congruent circles O and P, and we're told that these are tangent circles. So you can see their point of tangency right there where the circles kiss ever so lightly. We're also told that segment AP is tangent to circle O. That's this segment from the center of circle P to that point of tangency A on circle O. And we're told that this segment has a length of 15. Then we're asked to find R, the radius of circle P. Of course, since these two circles are congruent, Circle O has the exact same radius. In a lot of geometry problems, the key is to introduce a triangle, and this one is no different, so let's start building up our triangle in what is probably the obvious way. Let's draw this segment joining the centers of the circles, so this segment between P and O. All three solutions to this problem require a common insight about this segment OP which is that it does indeed intersect these two circles at their point of tangency. It certainly looks like that in the picture, and that is a result we know to be true. If we join the centers of two tangent circles, the segment joining the centers passes through their point of tangency. What that means is this segment never leaves the circles, so it's entirely composed of this radius of circle P and this radius of circle O. Both of those radii have the same length, which we'll just call R. Again, that's because these circles are congruent. So if we join the centers of these circles, we're going to get this segment with length 2R. So let's write that over here. OP, we'll just write OP equals 2R as kind of our shorthand for saying that's what its length is. Like I said, we'll need that for all three solutions. The first solution, I think, is the easiest, and it uses the Pythagorean theorem. It goes a little something like this. Since this AP segment is tangent to circle O, if we draw a radius from O to A, necessarily that radius has to be perpendicular to the tangent at that point of tangency. And so what we've got here is a right triangle, and, of course, that means we can use the Pythagorean theorem. What's the length of segment OA? Well, it's a radius of circle O, and, of course, circle O is congruent to circle P, so its length is just R. I dropped my pen. Sorry about that. Its length is just R, that radius length that we're trying to solve for, and we can solve for it now by just using the Pythagorean theorem. So let's write this out. The sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. The legs in this case have lengths of r and 15. So r squared plus 15 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And like we said earlier, the hypotenuse, that thing traveling between the centers of the circles, has a length of 2r. We want to be sure to square that whole thing. All right, so we've got r squared plus 15 squared is 225 equals 4r squared. We're just doing algebra now, solving for r. Let's subtract r squared from both sides. So we have that 3r squared is equal to 225. Now divide everything by 3. So we have r squared equals 225 divided by 3. Let's add up the digits of 225 to see if it's a multiple of 3. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9, so 225 is indeed a multiple of 3. It turns out 225 divided by 3 equals 75, I believe. So r squared is 75, so what's r? Well, we just got to take the square root of both sides. So r is equal to the square root of 75. We can simplify that a little bit because 75 equals 
3 times 25, and 25 is a perfect square. So if we take that square of 25 out of the square root, we'll have 5 root 3. So the radius r that we're trying to solve for, this guy here, has a length of 5 root 3. That's the first solution. All right, the second solution is pretty slick. It also involves right triangles. In particular, you've got to know some facts about 30, 60, 90 right triangles. Here's how the solution works. We've got to notice that in this right triangle, the ratio of this leg to the hypotenuse is one half, right? Because the length of this leg is r and the length of the hypotenuse is 2r. So let's even go ahead and write it down. OA over OP, the ratio of this leg to the hypotenuse, is R over 2R, which is 1 half. Now in a right triangle, if the ratio of a leg to the hypotenuse is 1 half, we know we're dealing with a 30-60-90 triangle, something that looks like this. That's what we've got. And in such a triangle, the ratio of the shorter leg to the longer leg is 1 over root 3. That's just how 30, 60, 90 triangles work. So if we go back up to the triangle in our problem, we know that it's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Again, that's because we found that its leg and hypotenuse are in a ratio of 1 half. So that shorter leg, this one with a length of r, must have a ratio with the longer leg that's equal to 1 over root 3. So what I'm saying here is OA over this longer leg, AP, is equal to 1 over root 3. Then we just have to substitute some numbers in and solve for R. OA, of course, has a length of R, so we've got that R over AP has a length of 15, so r over 15 equals 1 over root 3. To solve for r, we just multiply everything by 15. So r is equal to 15 divided by root 3. And then we'll rationalize the denominator. So multiply by root 3 over root 3. And that's going to tell us that r is equal to 15 root 3 divided by 3 in the denominator, and then again we see our familiar answer of 5 root 3 pop out. That's the second solution. Pretty cute. All right, this last solution is actually the first one that I came up with to solve this problem, and it doesn't involve right triangles, so it stands out a little bit compared to the other two. This one involves the power of a point theorem concerning a point that is exterior, it's outside of a circle, and has a tangent coming from it and a secant. So in this case, we've got this external point, which just so happens to be the center of another congruent circle, and we've got this tangent coming from that exterior point, and a, oh uh, well, we don't have a secant yet, but we can get one. Let's just extend the segment to make this a secant. So take segment PO, and we'll just extend it to make it a secant. I'll draw it as best as I can. Looks something like that. All right, so now we've got a tangent and a secant from an external point, and we can use the power of a point theorem. In order to use this theorem, we'll have to label two of the new points that we've kind of introduced here. Let's call this point, where the segment between the centers intersects the point at which the circles touch. Let's call that point Q. And let's call this point over here, where the secant intersects circle O for a second time, let's call that point R. The power of a point theorem tells us that in this situation, the square of the tangent, so PA squared, has to equal PQ multiplied by PR. It's got to equal PQ multiplied by the whole length of the secant, PR. Now we just have to do some substitution, and we'll be pretty much done. 
The length of PA we know is 15, so PA squared is just 225. And then PQ, well, that's just a radius of circle P, so the length of PQ is R. And then PR, the length of the whole secant, what's that? Well, the secant is made up of PO, which we already said has a length of 2R, plus this extra radius from O to that point big R. So in total, the secant is made up of three radii. Again, circle O is congruent to circle P, so this radius is the same as that radius. So the length of PR is just three times the radius R. So we have that 225 is equal to 3R squared, and this is exactly where we were in a previous solution. If you divide everything by 3 and take the square root, then again you get that R, the radius length, is 5 root 3. So those are three solutions to this fun little problem. The first two involving right triangles, and the last one using the power of a point theorem. Hope you liked it. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time.